Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we are going to be playing some Celestia tokens back home to my comfort zone. And uh, the green white tokens that you guys probably know about is the one that plays the playset of Nyssa, Voice of Zendikar, and Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, and goes on the Planeswalker plan of generating tokens. And that's a really good plan, don't get me wrong, but we're going to do it a little bit different today. So we're gonna use the old tappy untappy effects like Loam Dryad and Ceruli Caretaker to make use of Amara and God Favored General's abilities so that we can do the untappy, make a bunch of tokens, go super wide. But we're also going on the Trostani Celestia voice plan and going on the Populate plan, which is something that I have never done personally and I wanna try out. Um, so we have a few different effects to make tokens as fat as your mom, and we're gonna try to populate those and see just how big we can go. So I'm excited. Hit that like button down below if you're excited as well. Really helps the algorithms, helps the video get out there and get into more recommended sections. And without further ado, let's get right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link. And when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. So we are back home to Celestia in my comfort zone, and I love me some green white tokens. It's a deck that I've always brewed around with for years. Now, the one thing that the one downside of this token deck over a typical one you would normally see is that this token deck actually cares about spot removal. So that's the one thing I'm fearing, but the upside is that if it gets going, this is going to be very difficult to stop. So let's check it out. So the main engine of this deck is the tappy untappy synergies. So Lone Dryad and Cerule Caretaker can tap an untap creature we control to add a mana of any color so they're mana dorks. And the things that we do want to tap are Amara Soul of the Accord, who makes a token when she taps, which is obviously the main thing of the deck. And then God Favored General, which I call Dog Flavored General, is when it untaps, we get to pay three mana to make two 1-1 one, one tokens. And so on our upkeep, we just get to keep making tokens and keep doing that over and over until the opponent wants to deal with that by that time. Since we're not really using the cards in our hand, we'll have many advantage to just throw out there. So let's go on to the second main package of the deck. So I wanted to make use of Trostani Celestia's voice because I've never really done that before and I thought that Populate could be pretty fun. So she can pay three and tap to populate. She also makes us gain a bunch of life when a creature enters the battlefield. So we want to have some pretty beefy tokens for her to proliferate. So Avia Pashari can make tokens as well, but you can pay five and tap her to make an XX colorless construct token with power and toughness X, where X is the number of creatures you control. So she's going to make a pretty huge token. Voice Resurgence makes that same kind of token when it dies. And then populating that with Rosani is going to be really huge, especially with that first package making a bunch of tokens for us, also making mana. And then when we go super wide, we're going to be able to use Grove of the Guardian, which we can pay five tap it and tap two untap creatures we control, which should be pretty simple, to make an 8-8 eight, eight Vigilant token. And that's going to be pretty nice to uh, populate with Trostani as well, if we don't happen to have a voice in Avia. So let's move on to our mana generation and the way we're going to go crazy with this deck. So what's going to be really insane and help out a lot is Cryptolith Rite, and we have the backup Song of Freilies just to give us the effect of Cryptolith Rite at least for a couple turns to help us out. So turning all of our tokens into basically Birds of Paradise is going to be nuts because this deck has a lot of mana sings and having all of our creatures become mana dorks is going to help us go extremely wide and extremely huge. So this is where all the power comes from. And then we have a few more tokens and singletons. Pride Sovereign can pay a white and tap and exert itself to make two 1-1 one, one white cats. That's obviously pretty decent for a generation that out Cryptolith right, making two Birds of Paradise when it pay one white, basically, it's gonna be pretty strong. And then some singletons, we could have had two of something, but I wanted to make a split just to try some things out. Else Best Sun's Champion is pretty unbeatable, makes a whole ton of tokens. Then Collective Blessing is a massive Lord effect. I, um, when I was brewing this deck, I actually started off with a play set of this because it's just so powerful. Giving creatures plus three plus three, turning one ones into four fours, it's just, you're gonna win the game. We got a total of 22 lands. We do got some tech in there like Grove of the Guardians and we got a Singleton Westvale Abbey to make an Ormondal out of our tokens. And we also got a Castle Ardenvale. Just in case the board gets swept, we have some kind of power. 
So let's move on to the sideboard. If I do end up changing it, I'll let you know right now, as always. Uh, we got a couple copies of Scoos to eat the graveyard. Two copies of Knight of Autumn to blow up artifacts and enchantments, also gain life against aggro. And then we do have the package that I talked about before that you would typically see in Celestia Tokens. And uh, two copies of Nissa Voice of Zenikar and two copies of Gideon, Allies of Zenikar. This is to bring in against decks that we know are going to sweep us so that we can still have some kind of token generation. And then we have a play set of Conclave Tribunal if we do desperately need removal. And we can convoke this out so basically we pay like zero mana for it. So it's the tokens version of um, an exile spell. And then we have three copies of Deafening Silence against Prowess decks, decks that want to chain up a bunch of spells, and I have been running into a few Is It Phoenix decks lately, so something like this should help out. So that's about it, I'll get the stream started, and I'll see you in the first round. Really quick before we get into the gameplay, I'd like to welcome a brand new patron to the family. Brian Cuter, thank you very much for your tier one pledge. I really appreciate it, welcome to the Marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Alema Rar, and we're going to be on the draw with some green-white tokens in Pioneer, and I'm going to keep that. Got turn one Avia, turn two Voice, or Amara, or whatever. Mystic Sanctuary, that's dreadful. Now I know we're going to be here all day fighting blue-white control. So Avia, go. I might just, like, scoop if it's blue-white control. It's just, I really don't want to fight it. Nobody does. Because I know how blue-white control is going to go. They're just going to verdict our board. They're going to counter our walkers when we bring them in from the sideboard. Jace is going to um, plus and make it so our tokens can never deal damage. Okay, if this is mono-blue, it's a different story. That'd be much better if this is mono-blue. Get him for one with the Via. And we're just going to get down this Amara. Oh, I, I messed up. I was actually supposed to go, um... Yeah, let's get out voice here to prevent counter spells. I was actually supposed to go Cerule Caretaker, tap... Uh, oh wait, no, I can't do that. It would have summoning sickness. Against the blue deck, you always want to slam voice as quick as you can to shut off counter spells. Just don't play a white source. This would be 200% less annoying if you just stayed mono blue. Engulf the Shore is fine, because we can recast everything. It does destroy our tokens, but not as bad. If this is um our our buddy, Gab VM. Oh yeah, see they scoop it up to voice. I have a feeling that they were counterspells.deck and that they couldn't beat voice. So counterspells.deck, I probably want the planeswalkers. Because they're probably gonna be like bouncing our board a bunch. And I want stuff that stays there. And, um, Conclave Tribunal, just in case they got a bunch of walkers. I don't currently know what they are, but let's just bring in two of them for now, just to be safe. And, um, we're gonna cut one General, one Caretaker, two Pride Sovereigns, and the Song of Free Elises. And run it like that. I could bring in Daphne Silence. If they are Aetherflux, um, Storm... Because it kind of looked like it. If, they're, if they are Aetherflux, then I'll have to bring in Deafening Silence. But currently, we don't know. Um, so let's just keep it safe. Yeah, Scooz shuts down the Sanctuary. But it's just, like, it doesn't, like, commit to our board that much. It's, like, kind of mediocre if, they, if it's not, like, being held up for that, I guess. I guess I'll bring in one. Oh, it's too late. They don't really snap cast a blue eye control and pioneer. They don't have torrential gear hulk in there. So uh not a big reason to bring in Scoos. But they're great they don't use their graveyard as much as modern blue eye control would with the snapcasters and such and logic not. All right, uh, this hand I will keep because that has a turn three Nissa, and if I can resolve that, I feel like I'm in a good spot. So let's keep it.
I want to find out what they are. Okay, it is blue way. All right. That's dreadful. That is very dreadful and not ideal. But we're going to be here a while. Especially because of the fact that they're playing extremely slow. Like, they're taking five minutes for, like, each turn. Like, they have priority. Like, are you going to cast a spell? Like, are you going to cycle... Are they really just tanking on whether or not to cycle that cast out? Or... Or what? All right. Play Amara. Got a walker to play? I wouldn't mind. It would allow me to get out Nissa safely. Okay, it looks like they're holding up Absorb, so I'm... Um, I... Probably don't get out Nissa until they tap out. So I'm probably just going to play Cryptolith right. I want Nissa to resolve, like, really bad. The Planeswalkers are important here. Uh, I'm just going to play a basic forest to get around Sensor. Because they sometimes play a playset of Sensor. I have so much lands anyways, it doesn't matter if I get out of tap Temple Garden here. Okay, see, they did have Absorb. Good thing I didn't play Nyssa. I'm not holding up Vela Summer, so I'll just F6. There's the verdict. All right, so now I get down the Nyssa. Ooh, the Dog Flavor General. That's good. The God Draws Gids. The God Draw is Gids. And uh, thanks to this Nyssa, uh, this grove is going to crack easily. Very easily. So they do have a way to deal with the Nyssa, though. They can Teferi Tuck and stuff like that, whatever you expect. Thank you, Noble Chili. It was a fun, it was a fun little creation. Ooh, that's a solid one right there. That is a solid one. I'm not going to reveal the Grove. I just play the Dog Flavor General. Try to get them to tap out for Big Teferi so I can slam the Elspeth. And that would be amazing. So again, that's best case scenario. That is best case scenario. So best case scenario, they tap out for Teferi and Tuck, and then I slam Elspeth. Zersh, yeah, they're cycling. They're in desperation mode. They don't want me to get to that ult. They see that ult there. They don't want me to get to it. Big Teferi. Oh, Lyra. Sure. You know what can deal with the Lyra? Elspeth's minus. And you just tapped out, too. You don't even know what's going to hit you. A second Grove just because... All right, this is amazing. This is so good. Now I'm kind of tempted to mine as Nissa, and I think I will. Yeah, getting the attack power pressure then. Just don't hour of revelation. Another one. Ouch. Um, I'm not going to use that ability. I'm going to say no to that. I actually kind of want to, um... I could just plus, um, plus Nyssa. Or no, I could, I could, um, plus Elspeth and then minus Nyssa. Just get a lot of counters on stuff. And just try to hope that they, just hope they don't have another verdict. I guess that's what I do. Yeah, let's do that, I guess. Ooh, voice resurgence. Do I have enough? No, I don't. Alright, so plus Elspeth. Let's use Grove of the Guardian.
minus on Nissa and just pass a turn. And if they want to swing and tap out with Lyra, they're in for some hurt. They're in for actually lethal. <laughs> this is actually lethal. So they want to kill something. They're killing Elspeth. Now they're going to have to sweep and then I get to keep Nyssa around. All right, so let's start on a voice resurgence. See if they would like to counter it. Because if they're holding up Settle the Wreckage, I get to make so much board state with these voices. It's going to be amazing. Then I get to thin the deck entirely of lands. Play another one. And now they're going to do something in response. They're going to absorb that one. They didn't absorb the first one. And now I get a 9-9 token. And now they're definitely going to settle the wreckage, aren't they? Well, let's get a dude. Alright, so... Is there any downside to swinging everything? Like, is there any reason to stay back with anything? I don't think so, because I'm going to make another giant voice token. And I'm going to fetch all the lands out of my deck, and Nissa's going to die. And if they sweep the board again, that would suck. But I will be left with, um... Hold on. Hold on a second. So, I'll have a voice. I'll have two four fours and a plant. Nissa will die. They'll still be at 25. Yeah, this is this is worse. Is it, yeah, is there, that's the question right now. Is there any reason to hold back creatures here? Do you want to get in there and there? And do, do I just get in with like this many and just leave like, like three dudes back? Or do I just get in with that many? That's still a decent amount. What is that? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? This isn't lethal either, so that could be enough. Yeah, it's still it's still a turn two clock. It is still a turn two clock if I swing like this. And then this will tap out if they don't have settle and I can make more tokens. I have Grove of the Guardian still. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hold at least a couple back for settle the wreckage. I expect settle the wreckage here, though. If they don't have it, then they're going to die anyway. Because we have so much power on board, they're definitely dead. Yep, it's a settle the wreckage. Yep, there it is. I make another token. And yes, I will go search in all of those lands. That's fine. They get to stay at a very high life total, and they're going to get to kill Nyssa. I'm still pretty safe, and they have one card left in hand. They're really tanking on this. It's their own Settle the Wreckage. They cast it. I don't know why they don't just click OK. All right, we will use Settle the Wreckage's ability. Thin our, our library of basics. Got all of them right there. Boom. Got them. Alright, pass a turn. I still have a really huge board state. It looks like Nissa's gonna die. And Nissa's dying. They're at 30. Conclave Tribunal. Alright, well, I am not expecting them. I'm not playing around a second settle the wreckage, I don't think. So I think I'll just swing. I'm going to hold back this plant and one other plant just so I have something to grow for the Guardian. Or 
Or let's let's swing all except the plant and the voice. I want to keep the voice around to prevent counter spells still. We got another settle. They luck into two settles and a supreme verdict. Double Lyra, double settle. Okay, they're gonna Azarius Charm. I'm gonna make another one though, so that's fine. You still got a lot of damage coming at you. And they can scry with Castle Vantress, look for more answers. They could also make a token with Ardenvale and um, Chump Block, one of the elementals too. Yeah, the voice token stays bigger, and that's relevant. We gotta pressure them. Okay, are they gonna Ardenvale, or are they gonna Vantress? I think it's in their best interest of Vantress here. They just gotta scry for a board wipe. Like, really bad. They're taking it. The damage is done. You can press OK. All right. Conquer Tribunal. Deal with that Lyra. So it stops gaining life. And they're going to have to find the board wipe off the top. Come on, opponent. Can you click buttons? <laughs> it takes so long to click buttons. Oh no, they hadn't absorbed. I make another token though. I make another token. I have plenty of lethal power on board here. And they have zero cards left. They got triple absorb, double Lyra, a verdict, and a settle. Like double board wipe, double triple counterspell, double Lyra. Like Oh, and they topped the land. That's not enough. I think we got this one. Let's go for the Guardian here. Make another 8-8. Can I get a Collective Blessing off the top? That would be cool. Collective Blessing, a Gideon, something like that. Can I get a Westvale Abbey? Amara. Alright, so if I swing everything, they're gonna make a chump blocker with Ardenvale. Oh, they just scoop it up! Alright, cool. Well, I apologize, YouTube, for how slow that opponent was. Like, they were taking, like, a minute to click every button. But we got there, and I'm super happy you were able to take down Blue White Control. I don't care that they got mana screwed in game one. That deck, if you're going to play that deck, you deserve to be punished. <laughs> got a game here against the X-King. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some Pioneer Green-White tokens. So and let's keep that hand. That's good. We got the curve of Cerulea Caretaker into this, and that's, that's what we wanted. So let's do it. See if they have an answer to that. So you can see how they have a Nissa avatar. I'm expecting mono green ramp or mono green devotion or mono green hardened scales. One of the three. Mono green stompy. Inspiring vantage, complete opposite. So hopefully they don't have a whole bunch of burn and removal and stuff. So what could this what would have inspiring vantage and not have burn? What would that be? Mardu control? It would still have a bunch of burn. Yeah, they're gonna have a whole bunch of removal. Alright, dog flavor general. And then let's play another Loam Dryad. And if I can survive to get our Collective Blessing, I'm probably winning. Too bad this isn't the Amonkhet and Beyond days where every token you make is lifelinking for some reason. They're just enchantment creatures. They don't have lifelink. Don't burn my dude. They're gonna burn my dude, aren't they? Don't burn it. Don't shock it. Don't wild slash. Well, I can freely just block this here. Don't shock this. Don't do it. 
No! Of course, I knew that was gonna happen. Ooh, Amara. Alright, Amara seems good, so play Amara. And that makes a lifelink token because this is Ravnica and beyond. Alright, make a white with Amara. Make a lifelinking token. Make a green with a token. And play another dog flavor general. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't get to untap with this, but at least it's there. But you know what would be awesome? Cryptolithrite. Gotta take it. Stop having things to do. <laughs> oh, they kill Amara. Oh, look at that. A backup Amara. What do you know? All right. Um, play an Amara. Tap for a white. Tap for a green. Tap Amara for a thing. Play another one. All right. I'm just gonna pass and leave up a life linking chum blocker here. Two life linking chum blockers. Soulscar McGee. Now I have so many dog flavor generals that they're not gonna deal with them anymore. They got two cards left. Swinging everything? They are swinging everything. All right, well, I'm going to do some blocking. Block there, block there. What do you have now? What do you have now? They're lightning striking tomorrow. Can you stop burning my things? Please. I stay at 10, so we're good. Now I untap. I make some mana. I yield to this. Do I yield to this? Are they going to allow me to yield to it? Every time there's a there's a stall, I just hear Jeopardy music in my head. All right, we're going to say yes. Ooh, there is a Trostani. Trostani is cool. I would very much like to play Trostani. So let's wait. And try to get her out. We won't pay for um, General next turn, and we'll try to get out Trostani. Still swinging the whole crew. Alright, well, let's block here. And I don't expect them to have a fourth spell, so maybe I should just double block. Is that a terrible idea? I think I'm going to do it like that. Like, if they have another spell, cool. If not, then we get rid of Soul Scar. They've had a spell every single combat step for three turns now. And they have another one. Okay. Okay, we're back. As you can see, the screen's real glitchy. There was some technical difficulties, but we made it. We're getting Wizard's Lightning in the face. Our tokens are getting eaten by Soul Scar Mage because of the prowess. And we are going down to five. And do they have another spell? They really just have five spells. Wow, and a Boros Charm. They just had the nuts. All right, the opponent nutted. The opponent nutted. I didn't expect them to have any more spells, but I was wrong. They had two more. Their last two cards were Wizard's Lightning, Boros Charm. They had... A play set. They drew a play set of Wizard's Lightning. That's just some luck right there. All right, but against Burn, we get Knight of Autumn to gain some life. And we even get... What else? I think that's it. I want those. Conclave or uh, Collective Blessings is a little slow and Elspeth is a little slow. Let's cut those. Uh, what else would I not want? I guess I want everything else. So let's run it right back like that. I could bring in Conclave Tribunal for like Experimental Frenzy, which is not a terrible idea. But if I can get out of Trostani in this matchup, we basically win. Okay, there we go. Let's keep that. That seems good. 
So he's got the turn one Lone Drive, the turn two Amara make a token. What's up, Namir for life? Welcome back. All right, basic mountain into Lava Runner. All right, Amara, go. So this seems like a matchup we might get to Grove of the Guardian. Or a, a scenario, rather. Just don't have a shock for my Amara. Okay, good. They're definitely swinging all, aren't they? Oh, they're not swinging. They know I'm gonna block with Amara. Alright, make a token. Untap. Play a... Voice Resurgence. And then we'll just play a Temple Garden and pass. And leave up Amara to make more Life Linkers. I don't expect to be able to uh, block something successfully because they have so much spells. They revealed that much to us in the last game. Devony Silence would be fine. I don't know. It only stops non-creature spells. They have a bunch of creatures, too. It's good against Experimental Frenzy, but I don't know for sure if they're going to have that or not. They probably brought it in. Searing Blood. Well, make a dude. Alright, you got it. She's dying. I would like to attempt to double block if possible, but we'll see. Oh no, what are you doing? Light of the Staggy. Okay, was that their third? Did they just play a land? They don't have any more land drops? We good? They reveal Soul Skarmage and Eidolon. That's annoying. But now you get the chance to block some things. Swing in everything. Okay, well, I'll eat this and I'll chump these, I guess. Maybe I don't chump these. Maybe I chump one. I do want to keep some bodies on board to make sure my voice is still alive. Yeah, I don't want my voice to be in Lightning Strike or Wizard's Lightning range. So let's just do it like that. Let's chump one of them. Make a voice token and then I'll just play Knight of Autumn. And make sure my voice is a 4-4. Four, four. Ooh, Trostani. That is good. And now I can start populating this elemental if it doesn't die. Okay, that is the plan. Opponent, don't have multiple burn spells. I swear to goodness. Because if I get one populate off on this elemental, we are probably winning the game. Uh, I guess I'm going to pass in hopes that they don't attack. <laughs> I should have swung with the soldier token because I don't think I'm going to chump here. I want my elemental to be a 4-4 through to the end of this turn. I cannot let this get wizard's lightning here. I have to be super cautious because if I get to untap with my stuff, I win. Okay, they're playing their free Soul Scar Mage. They're playing the free Eidolon. All right, so they would need to have Wizard's Lightning. Oh, I bet they're just passing here. Ooh, oh man, the dream, the dream. And then Amara also. This is so good. This is so good. Sure, I don't care. I'll take that swing. I'll take that hit. Gain some life. Use Trostani. Make another elemental token. Gain six life. Are you scooping yet, opponent? Are you scooping yet? I'm just gonna pass. I don't need to there's no reason for me to be to rush anything here. And then I can just like even make an 8-8 token with Grove of the Guardian too if I wanted. Ooh, this is beautiful. Oh no! Well that kind of screws me.
Well, I think I'm still winning here, but that kind of screws me. <laughs> that stops my life gain, but I have a much bigger board than them, so I don't mind. I didn't bring in any Conclave Tribunals or anything, but we, we should be good. So now I can just uh, leave up Grove of the Guardian here. Uh, let's go to combat, I think, and get in with our elemental tokens. And I think I do want to, instead of populate, I think I do want to make an 8-8 Vigilance because the Vigilance can stay back to block and that's important. Chum blocks with Eidolon. Yeah, they scoop. Alright, cool. We got there. So now we know they have that Raptor and they got Eidolon. Very scary things. Very, very scary things. I think I still want to leave it the same though. Like, Conclave Tribunal can get rid of the Raptor, but I just don't think... I just don't think we need it. I mean, maybe I bring in at least a couple. Because that Raptor is gonna stop us. Alright, cut one Song of Frey Elise. Cut one... General. General's a little slow here, especially on the draw. You know, since it's slow on the draw, maybe I just cut it and just bring in the rest of the Conclave Tribunals. And maybe even, like, one Nissa just because it makes chump blockers. Alright, that's the plan. Uh... This hand... Does it do anything? I guess it does. Let's keep it. Because I can go Cryptolith right on turn two and then just have a bunch of mana. They did no turn one play. I'm happy about that, but I'm also sad they might have a wild slash for my Loam Dryad here, and they do. All right. They shock it. I have never seen that art of shock before. I have never seen this shock. They didn't do anything on turn two either. All right, well, I gotta get out of Mana Dork, so... Yeah, play a Loam Dryad. I can't play Cryptolith right here, I don't think. Next turn I can go Cryptolith right plus Voice, and then I can go Pride Sovereign plus Conclave, and then I can start making life leaking tokens, and then I can Westvale Abbey. That's the plan if my stuff doesn't get constantly killed. Is the Exile Black or Red Permanent for two mana Pioneer legal? Uh, no, it is not legal in Pioneer. It's called Celestial Purge. And they lightning strike my dude again. Good thing they lightning strike those and not my pride sovereign. So now this turn I can get out pride sovereign. And they just main phase Boros charm us. Oh, because they're going to light at the stage. That's why. They get a sacred foundry and a monastery swift spear. So next turn they can play those. Alright, I'm going to save that Westville Abbey for a secret as long as I can. I'm getting out pride sovereign here. Um, I, ca I can't use its exert ability until I get a white source. Um, but Cryptolith, uh, Cryptolith Rite can produce that white source if I need it to. Second Foundry, don't shock and play an Experimental Frenzy. They are shocking. Are they playing Experimental Frenzy? I'll have to Conclave Tribunal it if they play that. Swiss Pier. Okay, so they have a very good curve out here of what they want to do because they shocked... No blocks. Okay, nothing. So they're holding up three mana's worth of stuff here. Light of the stage. Well, that's why. What do they get? A land and a wizard's lightning. So they can wizard's lightning my pride sovereign, which they'll probably do. It would be weird if they didn't. Ooh, they actually didn't. Oh, and I got a white source. I think I'm doing this now. I think I'm slamming it. Well, let's play Cryptolith right here. And then let's just leave up, uh, leave up this exert. Yeah, leave up this exert. I think it's worth it. 
gonna wizard slating my prize sovereign they didn't they still didn't do it they're holding up mana for something okay what's this wizard's lightning hidden gonna hit my prize sovereign Another Swiss beer, okay. Yeah, it's not a wizard, it's a monk. All right, they're just going to combat. I'm not gonna block. I would like to untap with these life linkers. Wizard's lightning is going to hit. Okay, it's gonna hit Pride Sovereign, so now let's exert it. Make two life linkers. Oh, it grew! It grew out of range! Oh, it gets plus one plus one for each cat. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, okay, this is great. All right, so now we have Amara as well. Oh, this is so good. Now we're gonna be able to Westville Abbey too. Tap for white here. Voice resurgence, Westville Abbey is on deck. Oh. This is so great. Okay, I'm just gonna attack here. I'll get I'll gain a life here. I don't care about you. I'm blocking. I might even just conclave tribunal because just because. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'll just save voice as a chump blocker here. And there's a Frostodon, that's why I saved it. Because I was thinking they might have a Frostodon. They're looking at that Abby. That Abby is staring them down. If that Abby grew eyes right now, it would be staring them down. Yeah, these cat tokens are flexing on them. Look at that. What you doing with this last mana? Two cards left in hand. Wild Slash on Amara. Saw that coming. So now I actually need another token here. But I actually do have another. Because I can um, use Pride Sovereign to exert again and make two more cats. Alright. I will chump here and make a 4-4 dude. I am going to lose a life, but I... Net one positive if I took it. All right, Loam Dryad. So let's just um, go with a Conclave Tribunal here. I'm not going to Westville Abbey this turn. Conclave Tribunal, deal with the Rampaging Ferocidon. Tap for white here. Exert Pride Sovereign, make two life linkers, play a Loam Dryad, go to combat, attack for a bunch, put Lethal on board. Opponent, you have two cards to work with, two Swiss Spears. Can you kill us even through our chum blockers? Let's find out. All right, I think we might have this one. You two Lava Runner, sure. What's your last card? Is it like something to sweep the entire board? Oh no, Desperation Swing. It is the Desperation Swing. Alright, let's double block here. And, uh, jump here just in case. So now I don't have Lethal on board, but I still feel like I got this. Last spell's Searing Blood. Nope, there's Tap Tap Concede! They just did the all Tap Tap Concede! I like it! Sweet! I like when I make my opponent tap tap concede. <laughs> That's uh, they try to bluff and then they don't. Got a game here against 31 Schmidt and we are going to be on the play with some green white tokens and pioneer. And that is probably a keep. It's very slow, but it's a keep. Now we have played against 31 Schmidt a lot of times. And if I remember correctly, he beats me. Because when in doubt, just say that he wins usually. <laughs> 
I don't know if I beat him all the time. I don't know if he beats me, but let's just be safe and say he beats me. He or they or she or whatever. Oh no, it's mono black. This is a difficult matchup. All right, Lone Dryad, Castle Ardenvale, go. At least I got a blocker. And next turn I can go Amara plus Dog Flavor General, even if I whiff my land. You know, I'm not going to take any bait. I am just going to block there. There's no reason not to. There's nothing you can do about that. And they're going to play a Scrap Heap Scrounger, so it's aggro. That's that's a lot relieving. I'm happy it's not um, aggro. Or not a mid-range, rather. All right, so let's play... Oh, not, not a voice. Uh, Amara. So Amara, and let's tap Amara for some white mana. Make a token. And then let's use the token to cast the Dog Flavor General. Actually, I don't even need to. I drew this Grove of the Guardian. I can just tap that. Um, yeah. Play the General. And pass a turn. I'll just use this Soldier as a chump blocker. I'm cool with that. Gotta save bits of damage here and there, especially if their deck has a Spawn of Mayhem in it. They get to go to combat. I will chum block the Scrap Heap Scrounger. See if you would like to pump up your uh, knight. I'd be cool with that. We're gonna stay at 20. Fatal pushes Amara. Okay. Gutter bones, butter gones. Let's tap this dog flavor general here. Untap and let's make some mana. Ovia Pashari. All right, well, let's play voice because voice is a good blocker. No. Wait, what? Why? What's going on here? It says add one man of any color. Why was it only adding white? I'm trying to add... Okay, add green. Add white. There we go. Voice resurgence as a blocker. We'll chump with the soldier. And we'll get a voice token with the voice. And pass a turn. Now I'm looking for a Trostani so I can start populating that voice token. And I, I think I might want to block voice on night so I can force them to pump. All right, block on there, block on there. So if I force them to pump, then there's nothing else they can do this turn. And I'm wasting their turn basically doing that. So that's good. Waste their turn pumping. I still get my token and it's huge. And uh, they get to deal three to us, but I, that's fine. All right, so untap, let's make some tokens. Now we get, oh, that's a Cryptolith, right? That is a Cryptolithrite. That is huge. Cryptolithrite is great. And I'm gonna get out Avia here. And I'm gonna start making fatties. I'm just gonna get in. Like, screw it. Like, we're attacking now. <laughs> This is great. Yeah, they scoop it up. I have I have a Via spawning out eight eights now. What are the nine nines? I got an eight eight already. That's gonna be a nine nine. I'm making super amounts of tokens with the dog flavor generals. Yeah, it's great. All right, let's move on to the sideboard against mono black aggro. I probably want the planeswalkers. I know we're not going up against this is like usually we're bringing the walkers against control, but against mono black, they have no evasive dudes, so we can produce a bunch of chump blockers with these, which is good. And I probably want the conclave tribunals as well. 
We don't need blessing. Um, Elspeth is good. I love Tristani here, but they have so much removal. Maybe I cut one of those. One of Via, one Lone Dryad, two Pride Sovereigns, a Dog Flavor General, and a Crypto or a Song of Frailies. Let's get both Song of Frailies and bring back in the. No, the General and the Draw is a little weak. Let's just. Let's just bring back in a Pride Sovereign. Oh no! OBS connection errors. All right, we had a little bit of connection errors during sideboarding, but we are back and we're gonna be on the draw this time. So uh, this hand is very slow because the Fortified Villages enter tapped. Um, but if I do get it out there, I play turn two Surly Caretaker, turn three Pride Sovereign, turn four Trostani, or just like exert this and maybe I've drawn a two drop by then. I mean, I guess it looks like it does something. I'll keep it. I, I mean, maybe, maybe it'll do something. They didn't play a one drop on turn one, so I'm happy about that. That gives me time. And a lone dried is a good draw. Now that means that I can play Trostani on turn four. Ooh, Cryptolith, right. That's a decent draw. All right, let's go Castle Lardenvale, Cerule Caretaker. Pass the turn. This is a decent little curve here. Grasp of Dankness. Good thing that dealt with a 1-drop 0-3 defender rather than any of my relevant things. I think I'm just going to slam Pride Sovereign here and just start exerting it. Ooh, there's a Temple Garden. That means I can get out um, that Trostani next turn. Alright, let's get out Pride Sovereign. If it dies, I'll slam Trostani. If not, I'll just go Cripple with the right Loam Dryad and exert. Kalita's time. Oh, Rankle. No, he's going to make me sacrifice it. Well, I could block Gutter Bones and make him not do that. But then he's just going to make me discard a card or something. So I probably have to let it go. He can do both, though, now. Yeah, he's gonna do both. That's fine. I don't think I'm gonna be using this Grove of the Guardian this game. The Loam Dryad's not too exciting, either. I guess I'll ditch the Loam Dryad. Well, I gotta deal with that Rankle somehow. The Rankle has me locked. Yeah, I can't I can't do anything about that wrinkle. Is the wrinkle just gonna make me sack Shostani? I guess I just get out Cryptolith right, play a tap land and pass, and just hope to draw a Conclave Tribunal, because if I don't draw Conclave Tribunal, then I can't do anything about that wrinkle making me sack my creature over and over because they have the lock with gutter bones. That was a lot to say. But that's what's going on. Is that I'm locked under wrinkle plus gutter bones combo. They're gonna make me discard my hand slowly but surely as well. Yeah, if I don't top that Conquer Tribunal now, I'm conceding. They got back Bloodsoe Champion. Yeah, it's over. Alright, Wrinkle locked. Wrinkle locked. But now we're on the play. And hopefully we don't get a very slow mana base start like we did last time. Alright, so I think I just submit it right back. I think I'm set up for this. Rankle kind of pressures our walkers. Like to go first? Yes. Okay, it's 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 pretty slow, but at least it curves into Gideon. I'll keep it. Fortified Village, Feeling Forest, play a Loam Dryad, and pass. So I'd like to top deck something like a uh, Dog Flavor General or a Amara here. Okay, good thing we didn't get Thoughts Eased. Temple Garden tapped. I'm not going to chump here, so let's just attack.
I might just conclave tribunal something. I feel like Pride Sovereign would die, and I'd rather stem the bleeding. Because I won't be able to use Pride Sovereign next turn anyways. Actually, you know what? I will. I will actually be able to. Okay, I guess the upside is worth it. Uh, yeah, I guess the upside's worth it. So let's play Pride Sovereign. And just pass the turn. I'll take a hit here. Or I'll swing here, actually. So attack for one. Now, if they don't mess with my board, I'm doing some great things next turn. Gideon plus Exert is a nice uh, a nice little one-two punch. Come on, just tap out for a creature. Don't be a Drana. No, they dealt with it. No, they dealt with both things. Okay, well, playing Gideon here is actually risky as heck. So I think I'm just going to play Trostani because Trostani is a guaranteed good blocker. I swear, if they have another push. Don't have Rankle. Come on, dude, really? Hello. Iron Claw Gonzo, thank you for the follow. Really, dude? Rankle off the top. Radon Curve. Welp, rip the Tristani dream, but at least now I can Conclave Tribunal. Alright, Fortified Village, tapped. Cerule Caretaker. If they have another Rankle, that's literally it. I, I'm gonna end up discarding my Gideon. Alright, pass the turn. If they have a second wrinkle, it's over. If not, Gideon's coming down. Okay, no wrinkle. Don't have a Thoughtseize. Spawn of Mayhem. That actually hurts a lot. That hurts a lot. Now I need another Conclave Tribunal off the top. Gideon just dies here. So I think I'm forced to slam Gideon and just make a token and make him hit Gideon. Yep, that's what I'm doing. That's all I can do is make him swing a Gideon for a turn so I have a chance to find another Conclave Tribunal or an Elspeth. So let's see if they do that. I have a feeling they're just going to ignore Gideon and hit me. Yep, they just hit me. Alright, well here we go. Top deck time. Survey says it's just a land. All right, GG. Yeah, Mono Black, like I said at the very start of the round, is a pretty difficult matchup. They have Disruption. They have the perfect combination of Disruption and Aggression to just trample us over. Got a game here against Betamax. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some Green White Tokens and Pioneer. And that is going to be uh, probably a Mulligan. It doesn't really do anything. has a lot of redundancy. That one actually has no mana, so let's mulligan again. And I guess we're keeping this one, so let's try that. I think I can bottom the Grove of the Guardians here. They're good, and I would love to use them, but we're too far away from that. We just gotta play with what we got. Um, so yeah, we'll bottom that one and try to go on the, uh, the Dog Flavor General plan for a while. Yeah, I agree with you, Cybershade. All right, let's keep this. Throw away Grove, throw away Grove. And now we just gotta hope that our stuff don't die to removal here. Play Lone Dryad, pass a turn. Temple of Plenty. Okay, looks like our stuff's actually gonna live. I don't know what deck plays Temple of Plenty. All right. Play the general. Let's tap out here so I can F6. Is it a mirror match, perhaps? Ooh, Nyx Fleece Ram, it's Enchantress. So if they have Sphere Safety, we lost for sure.
go wide a little bit. Cerulee Caretaker is not a bad top deck. Okay, so I think I have to go on a super aggressive plan here and get out Pride Sovereign, which I probably should have done this turn. But I just really need some aggression because I will die to a... to a, a, a... what do you call it? Sphere safety for sure. There's no way I'm going to beat that. There's no alternate win con. Like, I have Elspeth, but that does nothing. Flower and Flourish. So maybe it is a mirror. Maybe it is a mirror. Can I afford this right now? I mean, I guess I, I guess I can. I guess I can. Let's tap out these. Yeah. I guess I can afford it. I just have to pray off the top here. And land. Nope, but that's a fine, that's a fine spell. I'm a big fan of that one. Now, I'm definitely committing to Avia here. Okay, so we're, we're definitely in the danger zone. I'm gonna say no this time. All right, I know what I'm gonna do here. Let's just get in with these ones. Actually, this one too. Actually, I need to I need to keep something back for a via right. I have to keep one of these back as well. So I'll just swing with three of these and pass the turn, and we'll use a via. They're gonna take three back down to their starting life total, and now they're going back up to twenty one. All right, come on, no sphere safety, no sphere safety. Just be like a sigil of the empty throne. I get so nervous every time I tap five mana. No! No! Dude, that's so lame. That is so lame. I can't deal with that. I cannot deal with it. Well, I need my sideboard Conclave Tribunals for sure. Alright, let's go to combat. Swing with the 8-8. Eight, eight. Pay the 3. Try to win with this 8-8. Eight, eight. I guess that's what we're doing. I guess that's what we're committing to. Tap for a green here. Play another Caretaker. Man, thanks again, Ice Up Sun, for the sub. Have a good night. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. Catch you back on YouTube. I had a lot of bosoms. Now I have to pay four to attack. I'm still keeping up though. I'm still keeping up, but the problem is they have so much chump blockers. So much chump blockers. So it don't even matter. Yeah, Cyber Shade, but they're in the sideboard. I don't have them in the main board. Amara. All right, we'll play Amara. Go to combat, swing with the construct, make a thing. I will pay, I'll make a token. Now they're chump blocking, so now that's one less enchantment, but they're just gonna get it right back with Starfield.
So now they have a jump blocker forever. So yeah, it's just over. I'm not going to beat that loop. So they're just going to eventually win with the, the thing. Whatchamacallit. Alright, so bring in Conquer Tribunal. Bring in Nyssa, because Nyssa is likely going to stay around for a long time to draw me a million cards. Uh, Knight of Autumns for sure. Uh, Skews can stop them from using their uh, Starfield of Nyx. At least I don't have to worry about my board getting wiped. Um, Pride Sovereign can be a fat boy if he sticks around. Collect a Blessing's cool. Elspeth is probably not super needed. Um, I mean, it could wipe the Field of Angels if they have that going on. I feel like I just want my mana here. I feel like I just want to just ramp into things and not care. So I guess Pride Sovereign's cuttable. Um, Trostani is fine. I guess I'll cut Elspeth. I guess I can cut two Song of Freya leases because they're pretty safe here. And cut one Cerulee Caretaker. And cut one General. And cut one Tristani. And one Avia. You know, voice resurgences are never going to die here. Let's cut voices. Let's bring back in our General and our Avia and our Tristani and our Caretaker. Or how about our Elspeth? No, I just don't feel like Elspeth is going to do much. All right, let's run it like that. Or you know what? Let me cut one of... Okay, it's too late. They already submitted. All right, yes, yeah, so we're going to be on the play. And I'll keep that hand. It's, it doesn't really do anything to them, but it's got things to do, so I can't in right mind mulligan this. I can get out Trostani on turn three. Yeah, I can get out Trostani. Uh, I'm not going to use the Dog Flavor General, though, and get out Trostani first. Uh, but I do need to draw, like, an Avia or a Grove of the Guardian, so I have something to populate. So start on Cerulee Caretaker and say go. Okay, Tribunal's a pretty good draw. Let's get out the Dog Flavor General. And let's just pass a turn. I'm not going to use it here. I can just attack with it. I don't expect them to really block us. Get out Trastani here. Looks like they got a pretty slow start, which is good. And Ghostly Prison is not in Pioneer, so I don't have to worry about that. And now I will start using the Dog Flavor General. Gain some life with Trostani. Ooh, now I wish I didn't do that. That is a Nyssa. Alright, so that's good. Definitely want to slam Nyssa next turn and start getting to that ult. Oh, they're not finding their mana either. There's a Castle Ardenvale. Let's go to combat and swing everything. Play Anissa. Pick up. I could also just minus Nissa and start trying to finish the game before they get to that sphere of safety. And if they get the sphere of safety out, I'll just um I'll just conclude to penal it, so we're good. Um Yeah, I guess I guess I'm gonna use the uh the general here. Let's minus and get in there. All right, let's see if they have a planar cleansing, or not a planar cleansing, but a, a cleansing nova or a fumigate. Let's see if they got it. Oh, do you actually have a fumigate? Wow, they didn't. I thought they were just gonna have sphere of safety. They had a fumigate. Are you serious? Are you serious? You had a fumigate? Why not just the sphere of safety? Isn't sphere of safety enough? All right, well, Tristani. Make a token. Man. What's up, Samurai Dance Rules? And there's the Sphere of Safety. Good thing I have the answer for that. Alright, play a Loam Dryad. 
play Conclave Tribunal. Eat the Sphere of Safety. Minus Nissa. Go to combat. Attack for four. Put them down to seven. Now, do I have lethal on board? I think I'm one short of lethal. Don't tell me you have a way to get your Conclave Tribunal or your Sphere of Safety back. Nope, they don't have it and they scoop it up. All right, cool. Their hand was all green cards. It was all green. But at least now we know they got Vessel and Nene and uh, Corsair Crew Fix. All right, let's submit it right back and hope for the best. All right, that looks... I was going to say fine, but now that I take a second look at it, I'll look at it, I don't think it's that great. Oh, you got to go, Cybershade? All right, well, peace out. Have a nice day. Thank you for hanging out, as always. Yeah, this, this deck's going to do good. This deck's going to do good. Trust me. All right. Let's uh, mulligan that one. Let's keep that one. That looks good. Uh, let's bottom probably a Lone Dryad I don't need here. Turn one Vessel and Nene. Flower. That's an interesting choice for that deck. I don't think it's needed. But it works. Alright, so Fortified Village. Revealing of Plains. Play of Via. Pass a turn. Sylvan Carry added. All right, that's a Castle Ardenvale. All right, Cryptolith right, pass a turn. I am not going to play this Knight of Autumn until it blows up a relevant enchantment. I'm not going to just play it as a beater. Forcer of Crew Fix, Vessel and Nene is on top. See, now it seems nice to actually use Knight of Autumn to blow up a Courser, but it just makes so much more sense to save it for like a Sphere of Safety or something, or like a Starfield of Nyx. There's an Amara. I'm so tempted to just wait. But that thing's going to get them advantage. It's going to get them things to do. Like, they missed their land drop, didn't they? Yeah, because they flowered, then they played Silver Carry Out, and they missed their land drop. Yeah, that's a good reason. Since they missed their land drop, I think I will... I will um, deal with it. So Knight of Autumn, let's blow up Courser. Play a Temple Garden tap and pass a turn. So now they're gonna probably just play and crack Vessel and Nene to look for a land. And then I'll be very sad if they play a Starfield of Nyx. They got a Nyx Fleece Ram. So I can slam Collective Blessing here and just start beating face really hard. Ooh, and I drew the Conclave Tribunal. All right, here we go. Collective Blessing time. Now we're going to start attacking like crazy hard here. What do you got? You gotta crack your vessel and Nene and look for a land, probably. Herald of the Pantheon, cheapening your things. And a Nyx Fleece Ram, gaining even more life. Fortified Village does nothing here. Play Amara. Uh, I don't think I'm going to Conclave anything here. Because I'd rather save it for like a Sphere of Safety or a, um, or a Starfield of Nyx. Very much. Rather do that. Are they going to gain their life? Sure thing, sure thing. Find your land at the top. You didn't find your land. 
But she can play Nidalana Blossoms here. Now that is something relevant to Exile, I think. They found their land off of it. Dang. They add another Nyx Waste Ram so they get to draw another card. This is brutal. Brutal mixed strudel. I'm really tempted to wait on this Kong Tribunal. I'm really tempted. But they're going to start drawing so many cards and it's just going to be a nightmare. I don't really know what to use it on. If I draw a second one, that would solve, that would answer my question, but it is tough. I feel like I would regret using it right now. Because then they're going to follow up with the five drop because they just found their land right now. So they're, they have like a couple five drops in their hand they've been waiting on. They've been waiting to just play. And I'm expecting them to do just that. All right, something good to do? Something good? Just another land. All right, well, we're going to make a token with the Via. And let's go swing in with these two guys. Or gals or whatever. Get him for 10, make a 4-4. Four, four. They're gonna chump block with Nick's Fleece Ram, take 5, go to 15 or 16, go back up to 18 on their upkeep. History of Benaliah, I don't care about that, that is fine. That's cool to get back with uh, Starfield Nyx after the uh, ult makes it sack itself. Pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna make them taste dog. They draw a card. So that, that would be really cool with our, our Dog Flavor General because it's uh, whenever an enchantment enters and uh, the Dog Flavor General creates uh, two enchantment creature tokens when it untaps. So that'd be pretty cool in our deck, pretty spicy. All right, use a Via, make a fatty. How big is it? Is it 8-8, eight, eight, a 7-7? Seven, seven? All right, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Ooh, Nissa. Nissa is pretty good. Nissa is pretty good. All right, let's go Nissa, and I think I want a minus. I'm gonna minus here, and I'm just gonna swing. We're going all out. Let's do it. That's what we came here to do. Turn creatures sideways. Literally, that's our plan. Was to really caretaker and loam dryad. We're literally turning creatures sideways. All right, they're doing some jump blocking. Staying alive. Collective Blessing is just insane. This card's nuts. When I originally brewed this deck, I had a play set of Collective Blessing and now I went down to one, but it would be awesome as a set. It's just so good. Makes everything so massive. Plus three, plus three is a huge Lord effect. All right, show me something that I'm gonna that I was saving this Conclave Tribunal for. There it is. That's what I was saving it for. That's what I was saving it for. And now, and now, you gonna get wrecked. Another vessel of Nene. Yep, sure, sure, sure. What tribe got way better in Commander Nymphs? Satyrs? 
All right, Conclave Tribunal. Get rid of Sphere Safety and swing for what I assume is lethal. It's an older tribe. Oh, was it not Minotaurs? Um, what is it? In Legends only, demigod? Because there was wasn't there demigods in in Legends? Okay, the opponent scoops it up. We got there. Taking down green-white enchantments. Uh, yeah, I was saving. I was like, that's that's why my gut told me, save that Conquer Tribunal. You're going to need it. You are going to need it. And I knew they were just waiting on that sphere of safety until they were ready to play it. And right when they played it, I was ready. I was ready for it. So, uh, yeah, clutched it out. GG. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So this first game was by far the longest game in the entire stream. This game was a good 40 something minutes long. And this was just an absolute grind fest because it was Abzan. Like they had like Abzan is one of those mono removal decks, so we keep getting disrupted and whatnot and things like that. So it's really difficult to even battle in this matchup. And as you can see on your screen right now, we got quite Trostani flooded, and all we're doing is trying to stay alive against their mono removal and creatures and aggro. And all we can really do is with this Cryptolith right, we can tap Amara to make a token gain life with Trostani, and then we can use Trostani to populate that 1-1 lifelinking token. And that is all we do for a long time. Because pay attention to our top decks, okay? We top deck nothing. And I repeat, nothing for this whole game. We topped a land. We top decked a redundant uh, Cryptolith, right? We did top deck one of our redundant Trostanis, and we just keep repeating what we're doing over and over. I even top deck a redundant Cryptolith, right, with that um, Song of Freilis, which it doesn't even get the chance to proc because our opponent has mono removal, and all they do is remove it anyways, so we don't get a counter and indestructible on all of our guys. They get to eat the graveyard with Scoos, and now I don't know why the opponent particularly did this. But they stopped attacking with their questing beast at a certain point. I don't know why, because because of our board, it's completely it's completely unblockable. So they could have kept swinging at us with it. But seeing as how we're gaining multiple life per turn, they still wouldn't have killed us with it. Um, now I just keep top decking land after land after nothing after nothing, and and I just can't get anything going. But I have enough mana at this point to also start using Castle Arden Vale in the same turn, making three separate tokens per turn. And they end up killing Trostani and Thoughts using another one, but I do have the third Trostani to follow up with. And at a certain point, they end up actually conceding. I don't know why, because they they had like the questing beast that was unblockable and whatnot. Like I wasn't really doing anything, and I could never really get to a point where I could actually start swinging. But I was just praying for something to top deck. But they made it easy and conceded for me. Now we go into the next game, and now Avia is what's there to make tokens, but they end up killing it, and it's so difficult. This this game was so difficult to maneuver, because I could not commit Nissa to the board with that Vraska on the table, so I had to somehow kill Vraska. And I could not commit the Collective Blessing to the table, because I know that they had Golgari Charm. So I wanted to bait them to blow up Cryptolith right with Golgari Charm, but they don't. They save it. They just play a Scooze. And so now here's my chance. I have the Conclave Tribunal. So I want to Conclave Tribunal, the Questing Beast, to kill, to like swing and clear the path to kill Vraska. And so I do that. Vraska dies. And now they're able to Golgar, they, if they want, they can Golgari Charm to kill the Conclave Tribunal and get back their Questing Beast, which they don't. Now, what I'm able to do now is play the Collective Blessing, use the Proud Sovereign to exert, like I was at a very low life total, like seven or something, and then I suddenly gained, um, 
what was it? Eight life. And then my voice token died and now I'm up to 27. So I completely turned the game around and now I have really huge tokens because I used that Grove of the Guardian. And now I am just not attacking and I am turtling behind my voice token and this 8-8 eight, eight, uh, Grove of the Guardian token while I'm getting my Nissa to ult range. And I was even considering not ulting it just to start using it to minus and start gavening over and over again. And they just end up scooping it up because they realize that the Nissa is about to ult and they're just very far behind at this point. So we ended up grinding out the grindiest game of probably like my entire life. Like that was a heck of a grind right there, but we ended up taking down Abzan. So we move on to the next game and I did not know what the heck was going on in this game at the start because they played Swift Water Cliffs into Shimmer. So I knew something interesting was going on. I couldn't quite understand what. I thought it was like some kind of Brass's um, Bounty Brew. They Pirates uh, Prize or whatever to make some tokens. And what they do next is they Indomitable Creativity to blow up their treasure tokens and get two World Spine Worms. And I just explode. So that's what they were doing somebody in the chat told me it was an mtg goldfish deck it seems cool so if you're interested in checking that out i'm guessing it's on mtg goldfish channel on youtube um so i bring in the conclave tribunals for game number two now what somebody in the chat told me is also is that in saffron olive's list um the sideboard was transformative to become a mid-range deck and that kind of seems like what they did like i had a really good thing going on at the beginning of the game there but they had another sweeper like they keep having the turn three sweepers and just i get screwed over by it now but like they had a niv mazette parun or whatever and i end up conclave tribuning it uh tribunaling it now i want you guys to tell me in the comment section down below because i really don't know how this works but they into the world with kicker uh, or blink of an eye with kicker to balance my conclave tribunal and get their niv back but they got to draw a card and niv triggered and when niv says when you draw a card you get to ping any target but it was part of blink of an eye's ability that bounds the conclave tribunal to have niv underneath it so how the heck does that work where it bounces the conclave tribunal somehow the niv re-enters before blink of an eye draws a card i don't understand how that works um but if you wanted to let me know in the comment section down below i would appreciate it now we go on to the last game of the video where get, we got taken down by that Niv deck or whatever because the transformative sideboard plan got us and they're able to deal with the, our conquest tribunal. But now we're going up against Domri Aggro and they had so much aggression because they had Rekindling Phoenix into double glory bringer and I am drawing absolutely nothing. But what I do draw, I believe right here is, is this the game where I did it? No, no, it was the next game. Yeah, we end up getting trampled over because like they're able to fight our stuff off with Domri and their indestructible Ronas and I just get completely obliterated because I drew absolutely nothing but just redundant mana and cryptolith rights and all that stuff. So we go on to the next game. And this is the game where I am able to Westvale Abbey, I believe. So I have a via to make a big token for Tristani to populate. But if I remember correctly, they end up removing something like that. Um, but I, I have a pretty good little system going on here. I'm able to make tokens as I want. And I have that. This is where I learned the hard way that Avia makes only a static token equal to the power and toughness or the total number of creatures you had when you activated her. And now this is the board state where I top deck Westvale Abbey and able to use it and make a life linker, but they have that rekindling Phoenix that can eternally block it forever because it keeps coming back and reanimating itself. But luckily I top de deck the Conclave Tribunal that's able to exile their Phoenix as a blocker and kill them with Ormondal. So that's pretty awesome. But we go into the next game and check out this insane nut draw the opponent gets. They go turn one elf. They go turn two Ronos into turn three Mox Amber Glory Bringer. Like how the heck am I supposed to deal with that? How the heck is anybody supposed to deal with that? That is easily probably the most aggressive draw I've ever seen in Pioneer. Not even turn two in Soul Artifact on a Dark Steel Citadel is that aggressive. So GG to Gruel Midrange and let's go on to the wrap up. So we ended up with four total wins, and I honestly expected the deck to do a whole lot better because this deck feels like it's very solid, but what really was hurting us is um, our tons of redundancy. Like, maybe you only need the Crypt of the Rights, so you can probably cut the Song of Freya leases. Pride Sovereigns were not too impressive. I would honestly cut those. Um, I like Amara. I like Voice. Crypt of the Right is good. This is good. Um, maybe there's too many of these effects because our other tappy effects are like cryptolitharite, so maybe you can afford to cut a couple lone dryads and keep the Cerulean Caretakers because they're a little bit more defensive. 
you can probably cut one of via. It doesn't do what I thought it did. That XX colorless construct it makes where, where X is the number of creatures you control, it's vanilla. It's whatever you have on the spot, it does it. It's not like voice where if you play another creature after that token already exists, the, the token grows. It's not like that. This voice token's way better. This one is just vanilla, whatever, how many creatures you had at the time of activating, that's how big it is. It's still a great card, but it's not amazing. Trostani, if I draw multiples, it's not that good, so I'd only run run one. Sometimes we got color screwed because we're running three colorless lands, um, but it, it should do the job. It, it works out. So this is what I would like keep in the deck, and this is the stuff that I would replace if, if I were you. I would replace all this junk. And when I originally brewed the deck, it had a place at a collected blessing, and I would really want to go back up on that. And I would probably... Really, the Gideon Nissa plant is probably meant for the main board of green white tokens. Don't mess around, just put it in your main board. That's how it's meant to be played. And I think that it, it is technically, I think it is better for the deck to just put those planeswalkers in the main board. Even like Conclave Tribunal seem like a solid card that maybe is main board worthy because there were some problematic things that you just want to deal with that we just couldn't do as a deck that puts out a bunch of one ones. There were some problematic walkers, problematic creatures, you know. And we had no way to deal with certain things. So Conclave Tribunals is not a bad idea. Maybe you should just stick to traditional tokens. Instead of the Populate plan, just go with the Planeswalker plan. I would stick to that. Because this this plan, while it was fun and it was cool, it just it's, it's not going to work unless your opponent is a very uninteractive slow deck. And um, that doesn't happen often. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. Comment something. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. Uh, go check out the social media. Links are down below. If you want to catch one of these live streams, we stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see some of you guys there. The link to Twitch is in the description. Thank you all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. And we're going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.